Roll credits. You know, I don't know what this song sounds like anymore. I just, it's, it's running. I don't know. I don't listen to it ever. I'm just like, I just see it, the bar get them down. I don't know what it is. Oh my gosh. It's almost done. It's almost here. It's almost here. Hey, everybody. Welcome to X Penguin, a show where we've got Kai and me. I assume I'm the sexy one. I assume that's what chat meant when they said we've got a sexy one this week. I assume that's it, guys. Don't blow this for me. Don't ruin this for me. Uh, in chat this week, we are joined by uh, Ozone TW, uh, Zenonorsk, Kai Linuscast. That's you, Kai. You're not here. You're here. That's, yeah. Uh, we've also got Chris Ware, Cybrus UK, Hamish, the Poopy Bum, uh, and Linux Portum, which means the show can start. We've also got Falmy here as well as Arrowhead. Uh, I think I caught everybody. So, hello, everybody. How you doing? Hi, hi there. Uh, and so, uh, also, Kai's here. Say hello, Kai. Hey, guys. How's it going? How's your Saturday treating you? Wow. See, that, that's fucking smooth, man. I'm all like, what up, sluts? And you're like, how's your Saturday treat? That's fucking classy, man. Keeping it classy. I'm impressed. <laughs> Genuinely impressed. Yeah, I've got my tea here, so I got to keep it close. Also, you know, it's also just occurred out. to me that I haven't tested that we're actually capturing uh, Firefox. Yep, that's actually oh, wow. working. Yep, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. that. It's working. Good. Look, it's working. Good. See, I, I, didn't, I should have tested this. So, <laughs> <laughs> also, Nusui is here. Hello, Nusui. Uh, so, guys, um, as always with X Penguin, we talk about stuff we found interesting in the Linux space and games we've played. And this week, Kai has written some stuff in show notes that's designed to piss me off. I mean, he's gone. How do I how do I abuse hex? And he's got his little pen. He's like, "This is how I fucking abuse hex." And he's just written it in there like a maniac. So we're gonna get to a certain point of the, the show, idea. and I'm gonna punch him in the face. Um, that's, <laughs> that's from that's, long range, guys. He's from, he's crossing oceans yeah. to hit me. I'm just gonna hit that's you. So, I'm gonna hit my webcam so hard, my arm is gonna come out of your monitor. That's how that's how egregious <laughs> this is. Uh, but Kai, uh, what have you been playing this week? Just tell me, t like, do me a favor, leave that fail yeah. port till last, though. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> not, not, just, we'll leave that out. So this week has been uh, Dark Souls 3 with my buddy Officer Gibbles from the uh, Clueless Casualties. Uh, it's a little collective we have up on YouTube if you guys are ever bored and want to see us play through things or do little podcast episodes. Okay. Uh, you should put then, a link to that in the show notes so people can find it later. I'll, yeah, I'll drop a link in. Um, we're, we're not big at all. It's like Not yet. Not yet. You can be <laughs> yeah. big. <laughs> oh man but we've been having fun with that he's never played a dark souls game before so um you can imagine there are a lot of deaths there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of cursing uh, it's a good time then uh i've also been playing hitman blood money oh, okay thank you hey chris Ware. thank you sir that that game um has has changed my life quite a bit <laughs> I, was, I was debating between playing that and shadow of the tomb raider and blood money one um every time that the debate came up so, <laughs> so that's an indication great game uh i mean yeah, if you i'm sure everyone here has probably played it by now i'm the i'm probably the new guy who hasn't touched it before and um i'm hooked i, I love these maps and trying to figure stuff out wasn't hit blood on like the sega genesis or some shit isn't that that old it was on the genesis yeah i think it's around around that around that <laughs> time yeah no it's been a couple of decades it's a couple of days. definitely <laughs> no. definitely it was on the it was on the original nintendo uh this one was now this, now this has been around was it's weird it's like it's weird to me that a game that's been around as long as like like hitman blood money is taking your attention away from a new release that's kind of cool. i know i know it, it's fascinating but it feels like a game and i think that's the uh, that's something i've been missing so many of the games that come out now uh the narrative drives everything so it's more like you're watching and it's an interactive film Right. right. I think that's why those telltale games are so popular now. But getting into Hitman is like, oh wait, I have control. I've been gamified. So much so I've been gamified. Yeah. <laughs> this oh, yeah. I love that you can uh, take any approach that you want to as far as uh completing a level or completing an assignment. It's a it's a good time. Very um, good time. And Chris yeah, I've been Ware, streaming it on Twitch. Chris was in chat saying that he's uh, had a great time watching your streams. Um Cyber said it was Xbox and PS two. No, it was Sega Genesis. I'm fairly certain about that. I mean I'm it's fairly sure. Super mm -hmm. Nintendo guys. Yep. It was Sega Nintendo Super yeah. Nintendo. That's how, yep, absolutely. That's this this one. They had two different versions. One yep. had better music. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like this. I mean, this game's been out <laughs> since 2006. In all honesty, at least that's what Steam's yeah. shown us. Uh, it's priced at nine pound twenty nine. Although it goes on sale as low as one pound four pence, apparently, which mm -hmm. is quite an impressive sale actually. But uh, you, you're yeah. you're getting your you're getting your time out of it. Yeah, it's like it's still it's yeah, still it's still good because some of these games from 2006 are just not good. 
but this one actually no, is. this one's good I, I i i'm not a big fan of the music to be honest um uh but that's about it that's probably the only complaint i have yeah that's the only complaint yeah uh, and uh chris wants um, to point it's also available on gog nice yeah so what have you been playing, Hex? What did you, Me? What did you play this week? What have I been, well, I mean, like, I've got to get out of my system straight over. This week I did stream Star Traders again. Um, now, people, it's well documented, my, my love of Star Traders, so I'm not going to go on about it. But uh, I did, the stream was very much a tutorial of Star Traders. Like, I was kind of like chatting to Cybris in, in voice chat. And I was basically explaining to him how to play the game. So uh, it might be worth you looking up the archive of that if you are interested in Star Traders, because it's very much a tutorial. Um... But then we got sort of sidetracked and we talked about aliens invading Earth at the end. Thanks, Chris. Um, <laughs> thanks, Chris. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? Sorry, Cybers just said he got married to the music in Hitman. Okay. That's okay. I, I hope that's right, literal. Right. I mean, he literally did get married to the music. Like he's got a little LP next to him and he's all like, I love you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I, I, did, I did play some Star, Star Traders anyway. And it was, I mean, Star Traders is still my favorite game ever. It's a, it's a wonderful game that I really enjoy playing. And uh, that's that's what I played this week. But that's the only good game I played this week, Kai. The only good one, literally. I've I've played I've played Star Traders, and it was great because it's Star Traders. And then I mm. uh, and then I loaded up Vulture because I'm <laughs> Vulture for NetHack because I'm uh, quite into road likes at the minute i was like this vulture it's net hack but it's 3d that sounds fucking cool i was like that's that sounds like it might be something i'd enjoy and as far as i'm aware i believe it's an open source project that, that's been just put on steam i might be wrong there though um and it is utter fucking trash i mean this shit is <laughs> this shit is unplayable i mean it looks it's got this video that doesn't show you anything it doesn't show you anything it's just like like panning of cameras and stuff and you're like okay I and mean, then you look at the screenshots and it looks like they took NetHack and made it iso- like an isometric tile set. I'm like, mm-hmm. this looks great. This looks this looks like proper like like rich graphics. Gives you an idea of what's going on. It might be a way for me to stream NetHack without boring the shit out of everyone. Was my thought. So I bought it, mm-hmm. and it's only two pound nine pence. It's and you'll see I've got zero hours played. Right. The reason for that is because it took me one minute to realise that this game was shit. Like one minute. <laughs> I literally loaded it up right, and I. Uh, and I was like, okay. So I put my hands on the keyboard and I'm all ready. I'm like, okay, listen. And I pushed, I moved around a little bit and I was like, oh no, no. And the problem with it is, it's isometric and I'm using mm-hmm. dub, I'm using Vim keys to navigate as I always do in road lights. Oh. So it's sort of like moving sideways. And I was like, okay, this isn't bad. And then I went through a door and it put the room I was in above and I, I couldn't visually. I was like, it, it's this is literally less readable than the ASCII. This has literally made the game more confusing mm. than ASCII. Um, so yeah, I, I got I got pissed off very fast with that. Um, I didn't even last like enough time for Steam to register. I played it. it that's how that's how quickly I was like, nope, nope, out of there fast. And I went back to playing. Um, I went back to playing NetHack in the OpenGL NetHack, uh, NetHack G- the GL Hack, I think it's called the package. But it's just mm-hmm. literally just OpenGL NetHack. It's just Open NetHack with the tile set. Um, and that was great. And I was like, I, I should not have bothered with Vulture. I was I was tempted to refund it, but it's like two pounds. It's like it's not really worth worrying about. It's like it's, I can't be bothered to fill the refund for me for two pounds. So what just, are the reviews yeah. saying about that? Though? Well, the like, reviews are mixed, right? And let me. And again, this is ah. not this is not a new game. This has been out since two thousand and five, so it's older than Hitman, apparently. Um, yeah. But uh, the reviews say NetHack itself is cool. While Vulture adds much-needed graphics to NetHack, it doesn't do a great job of the interface. And that there isn't a fucking interface. It's awful. Um, should be free was another one. Um, all mm. you can do was update the damn. All you had to do was update the damn game. Fair enough. I don't know that's it. Paid money for a GUI and an awesome game engine that was supposed to make it playable. GUI is missing elements, making it basically impossible to complete without without still knowing all the keyboard commands. I mean, literally, mm. yeah, that's it. Yeah, and um, these these is there's a lot of positives there, but I don't I don't know. Maybe I need maybe I need to spend more time with it. But this well, this one's good. The review says this isn't cool, which. <laughs> Which I agree with. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably a SNES port. <laughs> probably a SNES port. It's, uh, it sounds it like one of those games you need to you need to spend time with so that you get used to the you know, get used to the mechanics and then... I mean, like, the thing is, it though, clearly. it's fucking NetHack. Like, it's NetHack. <laughs> it's like, it's not a game that, like... when I don't even know. When was NetHack released? Let's have a look. look. Uh, NetHack Wikipedia, right? Uh, let's find out when NetHack was released. Like, NetHack's been around since 1987, right? 
So I find it odd that they can't fucking they can't figure this out. I'm, I'm, I'm clicking to all my stuff here. So I'm finding it odd that they can't just get this working. Now has been out since 1987. So yeah, I'm sure we could have a better version of this by now. But uh, it was like I I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do a video about it. I think I'm gonna actually learn to play with their version of controls. I'm gonna play it, but I'm gonna like have mm. the actual NetHack next to me. And I'm gonna sort of mirror the controls a little bit. And I'm gonna sort and I'm sort of gonna, gonna illustrate why it's bad. I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm that's gonna have a good to, idea. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like. I think it's bad enough to highlight. Like, I need to make a video and give this attention because it's bad enough to to get my attention. You know. Um, the saddest part of this is, for almost half that price, you could have gotten Hitman Blood Money. <laughs> Shame. Yeah, when it's on Shame. sale, I could have hit my Blood Money for half that price. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, historical low of this game was no money at all. It went down to no money at all in Desir at some point. So that's uh, it's a bit shit. But yeah, I played that. And it was utter shit, right? And then I thought, and then I was in the mood, and I was like, I was like, oh, I still kind of wanted to play. So I picked up Clicker Bad Venture, right? This game is called Clicker Bad Venture. Now, I know. It doesn't I, sound good at all. No, it doesn't sound good, right? But I watched the video, and I was like, uh, this looks like it might be worth two pounds. I was like, okay, I might like play this one night and then just never play it again. So I didn't expect Shakespeare, you know? I was like, I just thought mm. this could be this could be something odd that'll entertain me. For like an evening, and I thought for two pound, I wanted to spend that right. And uh, I like clickers. This has got everything wrong, man. This is a clicker where they fucked everything up. These graphics that are on the screen at the moment, where it's like following the character around in three D, that's not mm -hmm. in the game. It's it's all for this long, this long field top view, which is fine. <laughs> but uh, False then, yeah, I mean it's it's not very good. Um, and then yeah, and the problem is with clickers. One of the things you do is automate it. Like you, you, you like when you got a good clicker, you click for a bit, and then you unlock something that clicks on your behalf. And then it's about mm -hmm. like it's about automation more than it is about actual clicking. And then when you choose to click, you make a tangible difference to what's happening usually, right? So like I understand mm -hmm. clickers, and that's what I expected. But this is a game where you literally have to click your mouse very fast to do anything. So I ended up with my trackball here, like a guitar, and just sort of banging it on the <laughs> button like a maniac. Uh, like I'm playing track and feet. You know that thing when you're a kid and you've got a calculator mm -hmm. and you go one plus equals, then you sort of vibrate your arm on the equals button to see if you can get up the fastest? Did you guys do mm -hmm. that in school, right? You, everyone did that in school, I think, right? Um, and nah. then the kid who could do it the fastest also had sore arms, but was a cool kid, right? No, fuck mm -hmm. that. Um, I did that. My little my whole body was vibrating, and then I looked at the screen and cut down a fucking tree. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" So I persevered for a bit, and then I realized mm. the game is basically it's basically one idea. You like you click trees to remove them, and then you can you know protect the chest and things will come and attack it. It's a very it's not a very good game. I mean, it's literally it's been out since 2017, and it doesn't have enough reviews to give it a good or bad on Steam. I mean, that that tells you it's only got five reviews and it's been out since 2017. It is yeah. not a good game. Not a good game. Um, Wait, yeah. what? What possessed you to, to pick this one up? I just sorry. like I I, 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 first of all, I picked up Vulture, and I was like, it's yeah. kind of not my thing. And then I was looking around Steam, and it because obviously the amount of games I've got and the amount of shit I play, like. I get recommended some horse shit, right? But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, a game, like, I can look at a game that's not very good, but I have a really nice evening mm. sort of, like, you know, just sort of like understanding why it's bad, you know? So I didn't expect this to be something I'd return to over and over. But I thought it might be fun. I could do a video about it. You know, it's two pound. Fuck, you know, let's go. Um, and yeah, it was a very big, it was a bad idea. It was a mistake. And I regret all my actions. Um, but like, like, this is, okay, this screenshot here, right? Um, there's a yep. screenshot of a little wooden tank coming towards a golden chest with your little dude squatted down, right? That is 90% mm -hmm. of the gameplay right there, right? That is what okay. you do. You hold, you basically stop things blowing up your chest and then you go and cut down trees to clear a path to protect the next chest. That's that's it. I'm, I wasn't, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. I'm it's sorry. Not, that's, um, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. I was sorry as well. Um, it was. It's so Sounds bad. tedious. I mean, it's it's tedious, and like I thought, like maybe I'm supposed to work hard for the first bit, and then I'll unlock something that goes to cut down the trees for me, or I'll get power ups that let me cut down the trees instantly and stuff. But the game just wants you to tap the button really fast, and I actually persevered. I, I played like I played a like half an hour of it, and I just like I just couldn't. I just kept progressing to different areas to protect the next chest, and I was just really annoyed by it. I was confused you know, and annoyed. 
when I think about it, this game is actually brilliant. The developers are trying to encourage gamers to start caring about the environment more. They basically made a really shitty game about cutting down trees so that we're deterred from ever cutting down trees. It's yeah, they're like, they're like, you'll care about the trees. You won't want to cut down the trees because it's so fucking boring. You know what? That's how real life works. In real life, I see a tree and I don't want to cut it down because that's boring, right? And in this game, mm -hmm. it's the same. This is basically real life, the game at this point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, well done, developers. Yeah, like, yeah, no, Arrowhead, yes, no, starting a garbage game to understand why it's garbage for the evening, right? That's like, <laughs> that's a lot of my library. I've got a lot of trash games, and sometimes trying to decide where the developer went wrong or decide, like, I think it's healthy to look at a bad game and then, like, sort of understand why it's bad and other games good. And I think as a YouTuber, it's a, it's a healthy thing for me to do because it, it allows me to sort of better th understand why this game is good and this game is bad. Like, so it is something I do more often than I care to admit. But, you know, yeah. And Scratch likes to kill trees. And Scratch in chat loves to kill trees. So, good work, Scratch. But, uh, yeah, those are the, I mean, those are the shit games I played. And then, th then, right, this is this is the bit where, like, I lost it, right? I wanted to uh -oh. play a game that was good. So, I uh -oh. picked up Toe, Jam & Earl in the last Humble Bundle, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Toe, Jam & Earl Reboot, this is Toe, Jam & Earl back in the group. This is ba essentially uh, Toe, Jam & Earl 3. It's basically an exact remake of the first Toe, Jam & Earl game. It's it's supposed to be good. People like this, right? Mm -hmm. I loaded it up, right? And uh, I was instantly bored. Like, you wander around, you wander around, mm. not having any idea what's happening, looking for bits of a ship, and then you go to another level, and it's literally you get in an elevator, and you go up a level, and you wander around looking for bits of a ship. And I was like, this is shit, right? So then I went back, I, I got my uh, my emulator handheld out, and I was like, load up to the original Toe Jam and Earl. And I was like, oh, this is a good remake. Right, okay. And then I realized that my memory of Toe Jam and Earl is good, and Toe Jam and Earl was actually shit. It was always shit, right? So when they'd remade the game, and it was shit, they'd actually done a really good remake. So yeah, um, I was, yeah. It was not a fun time for me. It gets a very positive on Steam, though. I think people have got serious nostalgia goggles for this, though. Yeah, I was going to say the nostalgia goggles are on very tightly. Yeah. Um, Cyrus, Cyrus has just gone, yeah. clearly you've forgotten the original. Apparently I have, because this is a great fucking remake of that nonsense. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was utter horse. Like, at one point, I was the fat guy, right? I don't know which one that is. Um, and the fat guy, like, someone came near him and he started dancing. I couldn't control the game for like a good four minutes, and I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand this. And then, and they told me to open presents, and I pushed a button. I had presents, and they're different power ups, but I didn't know what mm -hmm. the power up did till I used it, and I was, I was just, I was just deeply, deeply upset by the whole experience. So I had three games in a row that would just annoyed me, and I was very grumpy. I can tell you, very, very grumpy by the end of it. It, it, now I played Toe Jam and Earl on an emulator, the original, yeah. the, the Genesis one. Um, when I was a kid, I think I was maybe eleven when I tried it out. Like, I didn't get it. Uh, I didn't get why people thought that that game was great. Because it's shit. At the time. He was right. But it's shit. Now here's the thing. I'm I'm starting to wonder just based on the the world and how crazy and zany it is. I'm thinking you got to be in a particular state of mind in order. You mean to really that. high? <laughs> really fucking high. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I was stupid. And kids are stupid. So I understand why kids like this. But yeah, maybe mm -hmm. just being really fucking high is the answer. I, I'll have to do some research and get back to you on that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make a list of stoner games and just get really fucked up one night and just work my way through them. Maybe that could be a fun <laughs> stream to do, you know? Just, it'll, it'll start off with me just, like, being a bit higher and, and like, playing Toe Jam and Earl. And it'll end up with me, like, crying in the corner, covered in pot noodle. You know, that's how it'll end. <laughs> And that'll be for your entertainment. <laughs> we should do that. Absolutely. We should do yeah. that. We should do that. We should do We should call it a joint stream. It's both. <laughs> a joint stream. <laughs> oh, both God. do a joint stream. A joint stream. Yeah. me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then the map. Like, I don't know if you had, like, did you hit, did you hit, like, the map at the bottom? As you uncover areas, the map, these cards disappear. And the whole time I'm playing it, all I could think of was it was like the mystery thing on catchphrase. You remember the catchphrase when, like, you'd guess mm -hmm. and they'd uncover a square? It looks like the yeah. squares they took away, and all, all I could think of was catchphrase. So while I'm playing, this game was so boring, I was remembering <laughs> catchphrase puzzles and giggling to myself. I don't even <laughs> like catchphrase. That's how boring this game is. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. Let's, <laughs> At least it made you giggle, so there's that. There's one positive. 
You should put that in your Steam review. Yeah, I should actually make a review. Like, you know, it made me think of catchphrase. That's fine. Yeah. I should download shitloads of catchphrase for when I get stoned for that joint stream. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I hope I hope people see this right on the on the screen right now and go, that totally looks like catchphrase. This totally looks like the catchphrase board right here. And then like it's like you're guessing and things are being revealed. It's it's is yeah. catchphrase in tabletop simulator? Probably. Oh my god, that's something for the end of your stream. Yeah. <gasps> Such a great idea. Sorry, yeah. Great yeah. idea. Mm. Write that one down. Definitely do that for Hex Kernel Factor. <laughs> yeah. Uh so yeah, that that's anyway, so I played loads of shit games, but you've you seemed like you've played good games. I mean you've also yeah. I mean, according to your list here, you've also played Sakiro Sakiro. Sakiro. Sekiro. Yes, I did. Sek- and I completed Se- Se- Sekiro. So I called it Sekiro for the longest time. And then um, someone, one of my weeb friends, um, I'm a weeb as well, but an, an additional weeb, uh, corrected my weebness, I'm not pulled weeb. my weeb card, and he said that I'm not pronouncing it correctly. So it's Sekiro. Um, and I would know this if I played the game in Japanese, which I was doing. So I don't know how I missed that. No, but anyway, no, no. When uh, I play a game in Japanese, <laughs> they're funny noises the characters make. I ain't listening to the fucking pronunciations. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're funny. They're funny noises the, the the characters make. That's all it is. Yeah. Accurate. Accurate. <laughs> now the uh, so I, I completed the game finally. Now uh, full disclosure, I got to the end of the game without using mods. But the end of the game is so ridiculously brutal. I installed yeah. a mod to make things a bit easier. So I'm I'm not a true shinobi, as one of my buddies would say. But that's okay because the game is great. Um, just be prepared to die a lot. If you guys thought See, Dark Souls was difficult, this is a whole another can of worms. Um, that doesn't sound fun. That sounds shit. Uh, it's it's a, it's it's hard, man. It's hard to describe. That there is fun in that challenge because. Every mistake is your fault. That's the thing. The game, the game is designed very well. The combat system is designed very well. Um, the parrying system is one of the best I've seen in a game. But you need to have the reflexes of a god to parry some of these attacks that these uh, samurai and, and uh, ninjas and even monsters throw at you. It's it's a whole that doesn't, different no. experience. That sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds shit. That sounds like I'd have to care about the input lag on my wireless controller. That's how shitty that yeah. sounds. Yeah, you know. That yeah, and that awful. might be a thing. I'm sure that they've accommodated uh, that because this game was what, or I think it was originally. I mean, it's a Japanese title, so I'm sure PS4 was where this was tested originally, probably on a wireless DualShock 4. So I think you you'd be okay. Um, but I play with my controller um, plugged in via USB. I never have it detached because I hate having to charge stuff. Um, but I, I I do recommend people check this out. It's it's a if you're if you're a fan of Dark Souls and you want some stealth added to it, this is a good game. No, if you played that's Tenchu back in the worse. day. <laughs> stealth is terrible. It's like it's, it's not like required. You can't it's not play the game because you have to fucking hide. Is what stealth is. No, you have the option. Terrible. You have the option for stealth. You do not have to. You can go. Yeah, but if I'm not doing swinging. stealth, I'm getting stabbed more. That doesn't sound better. <laughs> sounds awful. That's like, that's when you use those shinobi powers, man. Get out of there. No, that's when you, you fucking can. install a mod to give yourself a fucking health bar. Well, there's that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely I mean, did that. Part of my, part Guilty. of my, one of the criticisms I have with From Software is that when they yeah. made Dark Souls, like I played Dark Souls and I finished Dark Souls more than once, the first one and the second one. Um, I, I felt like it was hard but fair, right? And yeah. everything I've seen about Sekiro, people say, yeah, it's hard. He's gonna fuck you up, and it's like Dark Souls was difficult it wasn't insurmountable like the trick was you had to get relatively good at combat you have to have a good muscle mm-hmm. memory for the controls and you have to get into like yeah. a rhythm with it. it was like a rhythm game when you're fighting it was like you know back forward back you know and you could also choose to play um, a character with ranged attacks and that made the game substantially exactly. easier yeah. and then they're like yeah. then they're like like okay people complex would be hard let's make a fucking ninja game with no health bar you just die if you get hit and they're like okay like, let's give it some stealth options to make it more boring and then let's not have a difficulty bar and i'm like okay that's that just sounds awful to be fair you do have a health bar it doesn't mean much but you do have <laughs> you do have it's one for, it's for oh. show it's like it's like <laughs> they haven't implemented this like the health bar's there but it doesn't fucking do anything it's just, it just all it does is go from full to empty. That's it. I've seen this game. Yeah, per, essentially. Yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of how it works. But yeah, the thing that separates Dark Souls from this game are the RPG elements, as you were mentioning. Um, you're not going to be, you know, using a bow and arrow in this or picking up a staff and casting spells. Um, 
so you are just playing a swordsman the entire time. And you also don't have a shield, so you know, there's that. Uh, you better learn how to parry. The game is fair. It's not cheap. It's just you need some serious reflexes, man. Um, and the the other thing that makes Dark Souls a no, bit easier to manage is you can level up. Like, let's say you make a knight, and if you just basically put all your stats towards strength, you're going to be doing some serious damage. In this, you're essentially the same throughout the playthrough. Um, your strength is basically the same. It's it's skill-based for the most part. So, yeah, this this, this See, one's definitely for the more hardcore. There's a, there's, I, I know for a fact, I know people, there's loads of gamers out there going, finally, a game for men. It's like, fuck off. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> oh, what I want to do when I, play, when I play a game, I want to put my feet on the desk, I want to pour a cup of tea, I want to relax. Mm. I want to relax to the point where I'm nodding off in my chair, you know? I want to be so fucking... That's one of the reasons I started playing turn-based stuff. So I can just be so mm. fucking chill. I can just get distracted and leave the game for an hour. I mean, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want any therapy afterwards, you know? And that's what these, like, these games give me, a need for therapy. Like, I will say I'm looking forward to their collaboration with... Uh, From Software's collaboration with uh, George R.R. R. Martin. Uh, just, I'm, I'm curious to see what that's going to be. So I'm, I'm hoping that it you, isn't as difficult want, as Sekiro. So what you want is you want the guys who make the boring, fucking tediously hard games who, that are deeply depressing to team up with the writer that never finishes anything who makes boring fucking books. So what you're going to get is the most boring game ever made, you know? So yeah, absolutely. It's the way to go. I think this, I'm very excited about this. I want to see how boring things can get. That's my plan. You, like, you, you, sir, are what we like to call in the States a Debbie Downer. <laughs> no, that's the thing. I like games that are fun. I like bright colors and fair progression and the ability to just, you know, bask in the worlds they create. You know, I'm, the, I mean, I mean all, for the guys in chat that are getting mad at me, right? I get why people like these games. And this game is beautiful. And, and like, it's fluid and the motion is impressive. And they seem to have done a great job. From Software do a great job of world building. So everything I'm saying is very much based on my taste. And I'm not actually saying this is a bad game at all. All right. And I don't really mean mm. it's boring. It's, it is, but that's not really, you know, the point of it. You know? um. <laughs> yeah. And, and on top of that, like Scratch brought up something um, during the stream yesterday where uh, basically you have these basically you could you could bring only oh it's a scenario uh, what two games would you bring with you like the only two games that you could play on some deserted island and that those are the only two games you could have and it took me a minute to think about it i'm i'm thinking all right i need exactly what you're describing i need a bright colorful world that keeps me engaged but i need some kind of difficulty similar to that of dark souls right and i couldn't think of a dark souls like game that's like that except one and people are going to be like huh but Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild came to mind. Yeah. It's not as difficult as Dark Souls, but no. beautiful, beautiful art really style, game. bright not colors, etc. And yeah. it's not boring, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, the second game was, I think, Hitman. I'll, I'll, just, I'll have Star <laughs> Traders and Final Fantasy XIV. That'll do me. I'm good. I'm good. In fact... Oh, I didn't think about online because games. Of, it's a, because oh, of those two games, damn. I'm done forever. It's fine, I'm done. Yeah. It's like, that's all I need. When, it, when I eventually get bored and quit YouTube, like... When, I, when that eventually happens, and it will, when that happens, right, and I just quit YouTube, I'm going to just uninstall mm. everything except Star Traders and Final Fantasy XIV, and that's what I do with my life from then on. That's just it. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you find you said, CK2 isn't hard. CK2 is fairly easy once you understand that no, no, that's, that's not true. I mean, if well, you I think CK2 the... is easy, you're a tactical genius is what happened in there. You're a genius. And I've got a, I've got a question for you. What? Hold on. Uh, CK2 is easy once you understand the basics. The question is, how long does it take you to understand the basics? About I think 700 that's where hours. The difficulty lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 700 <laughs> There's the hours. difficulty curve right yeah, there. Yeah. Understanding the basics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, um, Drew, who's often on the, on the channel, is um, he, he said more than once that, like, literally, you're talking like 50 hours before you even understand what you're doing properly. You know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, see, see, that sounds see like you find she's like, it took me two hours to understand the basics. Because you're a fucking genius, obviously. That's what's happening yeah. here. It's you find Chief is an actual military, genius, general. and he's trying to grade things at genius level. You, what you should be doing is programming nukes and shit. You shouldn't be playing CK2. Yeah. You should be actually like planning world domination at this point. Yeah. <laughs> if you understand, if you understand all the time and space and history and physics, then you'll almost definitely understand CK2. <laughs> <laughs> good work yeah well done yeah well done <laughs> ck2 yeah. is the reason that drew doesn't understand time i mean that's probably fair isn't it <laughs> but yeah i'm uh, yeah i know i've 
I'm being yeah. I've been ba- I've been bashing your games a lot. I'm sorry, but uh, it's not going to no, stop no, there. It's totally you, fine. You, you, I I watched you play Star Traders. <laughs> Now my see, cup of tea. See, no, no, but can you see like what like if you think it's like Star Traders, I think is yeah. the best game ever made, right? Like it's just mm-hmm. the best game ever made, right? So when you think that that's what I consider to be the best game, at the opposite end of that spectrum, we've got games you like. Um, yeah. So you shouldn't, you know, exactly. you shouldn't be any fucking surprise that I, I'm like, what, what is this shit? You know, <laughs> different strokes of different yeah, exactly, folks, man. exactly, and it's okay. And yours, okay. your favorite game is definitely prettier than mine. I'll say that much. Yeah. Because I love Star Traders, I adore it, but it's got the sort of graphics that only a mother can love, you know. It's got it's got that going yeah. on. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, now it's. I mean, we, we've barreled through this, we've ranted through this, but the ranting is not going to stop there because you're going to talk to me about Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, aren't you? Yeah. So um, there's the, there's a secret game, ladies and gentlemen, that I played this week, <laughs> and that secret game isn't much of a secret. No. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, on Steam, uh, Feral Interactive created a a a port uh i'm trying to i'm, I'm using air quotes just to just because uh, <laughs> so gonna go for hex's sake they, they created a port um that is available on steam right now and i know some of you are probably have probably been playing this for about a year now um <laughs> but yeah. i on the other hand wanted to wait until feral put out a port just because i like the idea of a company still creating linux ports I love we'll it when I, I love it when companies do pointless things as well. Uh, but carry <laughs> on. Getting, okay, so it. first of all, I've got getting... I've got no animosity towards Feral um, or yeah, towards yeah. Tomb Raider, right? So this is a whole thing that's going to be going on there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've played all the Tomb Raider games up until Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I haven't played Shadow of the Tomb mm. Raider yet. I will probably pick it up in sale. Um, I yeah, I you should. Yeah, should. I mean, I was offered I was offered a key by Feral. But I don't really, I don't really want to do a video about this game because I won't have anything positive to say about the industry of porting in this case. Um, so I decided to decline their key and I'm waiting for it to go on sale. I do kind of want to play it. Mm. It's been on my radar for a while. I've kind of been waiting for it to go on sale for ages. It's never dropped low enough for me to buy it. Because uh, honestly, if you play a Tomb Raider game now or in ten years' time, you're gonna have the exact same amount of fun. You know, it's nothing's gonna change. So I don't feel any yeah, rush yeah. to get to it. But uh, Tomb Raider games. Yeah. In my experience, have pretty much entirely been fun, like the whole way. There's been no bad ones. They've all been great. And Hamish, you're right. Um, speaking of interactive movies, I mean, yeah, the, the, this is definitely uh, this is the epitome of that, right? Uh, the game might as well be a telltale game, except with just a little bit more action. I don't know. Involved. I think the um, roaming but... around, the looking for stuff, like like the, the this is what I'm talking about, basking in the world. Like it's a little yeah. bit of puzzle solving as to outside of the QTEs and then the scripted stuff, right? When you're like facing a couple of bad guys from different directions, you go, which do I shoot first? How do I approach this problem? And then there's the bit of mm-hmm. like the exploration side of it. You just get to like go and look around this world that's really densely packed with stuff in Tomb Raider. Games. Exactly. And then like yes. the, the, the and... tombs themselves are these wonderfully complex environmental puzzles, which is just brilliant. Um, so yeah, yeah I do, which I'm very happy to be experiencing yeah, now. I really like Tomb Raider games, but there's a lot of it that's QTEs and bullshit scripted gameplay. So you know, this I, is true. I yeah. think, and, as, and there is a ton of that in this right yeah. at the beginning as well. Oh yeah, yeah, but as a complete package, I really enjoy Tomb Raider games. I've enjoyed the last two of the reboots, and I've yep. enjoyed all eleven that came before that. I think it was eleven. Yeah, see, I didn't, I didn't get in until the previous reboot. So like Legend and going on up. I played the original back when I was a kid. But I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So you know, there's that. Um, I think Chronicle Tomb Raider Chronicles is the first one I played, and that was just that was a bad time. Um, I just spent my time running around the uh, the manor, uh, just doing random nonsense because it was safe yeah. there. Um, <laughs> safe, but yeah, man. but because it was safe. But no, but Shadow of Tomb Raider it, it's actually pretty good. Um, I've only played about three hours into it um i it is more of the same it's basically rise of the tomb raider but with an expansion pack right just yeah. a little bit better well, that's all, graphics mean, are improved right, like you had the original yeah, tomb raider the, the, the yeah. first one which was i think was actually called tomb raider yeah and that was like a re a reworking of like the second two like tomb raider underworld it was a reworking of that was it legend mm. anyway so it's a reworking of that and then like rise of the tomb raider was like just like a se- like a movie sequel. There was no technological leap in graphics or in gameplay. They're just like, yeah. let's just do more. And then this one again, he's just do more again. And I think with some game series like Tomb Raider, that really works. And that's that's you kind of want like that that movie release kind of thing because it is like playing a blockbuster movie, isn't it? It's got that vibe to it. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, it's, it's, the games. it's uncharted for PC gamers, man. Like that, that's the way I look at it. Um, uncharted is a game for the those who don't know that. Uncharted is a, is a PlayStation. Yeah, uncharted is a game. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a very good on, game on, on, yeah, on PlayStation. PlayStation. 3. Great yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Tomb Raider is our alternative, right? Uh, Which is funny because that same PlayStation was uh, when PlayStation released uh, released that one. Uh, Uncharted. That was a uh, a reaction to there not being a Tomb Raider game in like seven years, um, and then oh, the reaction, yeah, because yeah. Tomb Raider came first, and then they literally Uncharted was literally like filling a, a void in the market almost, and then after a couple mm. of those games, uh, that's when um, when EDOS was like shit, people want this again, you know. They then they started with the reboot stuff, which I think really good. I think across the board it's been pretty good, but uh, yeah. yeah, did a good job, did a good job. Now I want to I, I, I want to shift gears. Game's uh, great. Check it out. Okay, but I want to shift gears. Oh, can we, do you I want to read what you've written in chat here that's, that wound me up? Yeah, a bit there? yeah, no, okay. go, go for it. No, you go for it. Your words. All right, I'm gonna be here getting right. mad. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody, pepper your Angus, clutch your seats. I believe companies who port Linux games are still beneficial to Linux adoption, despite Proton being in existence. Carry on. Don't mind me. <laughs> I feel threatened. Look, look, man. My reason for this is is there, there are a couple of reasons for this. Game updates can break games in Proton occasionally, right? Mm -hmm. And we can't guarantee that there's going to be support for getting those things fixed. If it's not the Linux community getting behind creating some kind of patches for Proton or Valve choosing to do so, we can't depend on the developer who made the game to do it. We'd like for that to be the case, but we know the reality. Some of these people, a lot of these people are like, well, Linux isn't much, of, doesn't take up much of the market share, so we're not going to waste our time. So no guarantees that we're going to get patches to make the game run that we've already spent money on and we can no longer refund because it broke somewhere down the line, right? Now, there are also some companies, in my opinion, who do hold themselves accountable and try to provide these updates to their Linux gamers, their Windows gamers, and their Mac OS gamers. Some of them fall off the bandwagon. Um, I feel that one, one, one example is Aspire. I feel like they did a great job with Borderlands for some time. But once that latest patch came out where uh, the Windows version received a graphics overhaul, um, from the, the devs behind Borderlands, Aspire just put out a statement saying, oh yeah, we're working on it. And I think this this is like going on nine months now that they've been working on it. There's not been another update since. Uh, no mention of it. That's frustrating. But prior to that, they were doing a great job. But that is an example of someone deciding, let's kind of just leave these guys by the wayside. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. Um, and the la last point is that users that switch to Linux want to know that they're going to have long-term support from developers. So if a company like, let's use Feral, for example, or we can even use Aspire, if these guys take it upon themselves to release some games that people do enjoy, specific games that folks like, put them out on Linux, and they choose themselves to continuously support this, these games that we enjoy, um, provided that we purchase those games probably from them or we make note that it's it's their port that we're playing. I don't see how that's problematic if they are going to continuously support that title or those titles for us. Um, it eliminates us having to do any extra legwork to make things work via Proton, right? And I'm gonna get off my soapbox. <laughs> okay, um, now, big old asterisk in the sky, in my opinion, yeah. is the asterisk, yes. all right? That yes. I'm putting above, yes. just imagine it right here, in my opinion, right? Everything you said is wrong. Um, <laughs> because, okay, for a start, you raised the point about um, about Borderlands uh, 2. Valid yep. point, right? But what you have to remember is Aspire didn't go, everybody would really like a Linux version of that game. Out of the goodness of our heart, we will port it for free. No, they was getting paid by 2K for that, right? There was a service contract mm. involved there. That service contract has most likely expired, which is why when Borderlands 2, the extra expansion came out, they go, are you going to pay us? And they've gone, no. And they've gone, we'll do it when we've got time. Fuck you. You know, um, the reality is they might have even been told they wasn't allowed to do it. The fact is that when a porting house ports a game, right? And as much as if they, now, again, big caveat here is I'm talking about games that work in Proton. Okay. If a game does not work in Proton, that's a whole different discussion to have. But if a game works in Wine or Proton, right? And it works well. In the case of Tomb Raider, it already worked fine, right? Um, 
when it works well, the porting house is essentially trying to, like, they're a business that wants to make money. So they do exchange of hands with money or they come up with some kind of financial package that works for both parties. Then the company that doesn't, like in this case Square, doesn't want to make a Linux port, don't have to, but they still reap some of the benefits. But probably, and I don't know this, but I would guess what happens is Feral go, here's some money, give us the source code. That's probably what happens, right? And they sign yeah. NDAs and all sorts. That's probably what happens. And then if you buy the game on Linux, they get some money back and they probably do the math mm. of how many people would buy this game versus how long it will take to port and how much it costs, right? So historically, yeah. up until Proton came out, their role in the industry was great because their role meant that we got games we wouldn't usually get, right? That's great. Or we at least got, like, we could go to Steam and hit play and play a game we couldn't usually play, right? Um, we probably could already play most of these games, most of these games in Wine before that, but you had to jump through hoops. And gamers like me and probably you, we're quite lazy. We just want to hit play, right? We want to hit stall, and then we want to hit yeah. play. Anything other than that, we're like, oh, fuck, you can't be bothered. Um, so there was a point in time when there was kind of, not even though I didn't like what they was doing, I kind of was grateful of the games to play, right? Mm -hmm. Now, however, this is a post-Proton world. Right now, there are thousands of games I can play. In fact, I can tell you exactly how many, actually. Uh, Proton DB. Proton, hang on. So if we just get to Proton DB, we can, we can see exactly. We can see there's like, okay, um, games that work, the 6,500 games right now that work in Proton without any problems, right? They're like platinum, basically, right? And there's all these diagrams on this screen here that show you things. Um, so when a game, when they make a port, it has to. You have to give me a reason to care. So if you port a, get a Tomb Raider, if it performs mm -hmm. as good as Windows, as good as the Windows version does in Proton, then your port was pointless. If it performs better than Windows and better than I can make it work through Proton, then there's a valid case to buy it because it's a port, right? But yeah. this idea of long-term service is. I mean, first of all. Ask yourself this question. I want everyone in chat to chime in here. And I've said it lots of times, but I feel like it's something we need to like we need to understand. Support is a concept. How many times in your gaming life have you contacted a developer with a problem and they have patched the game based on your problem? Like, go on, how many times does that happen? How many times have you gone, I've got a problem, I email the developer, now the problem's gone away. How many times has those now? Steps is happened? it just my problem, or are several users reporting the same issue? I don't know. How would you know? We don't know. That's a good. Okay. You don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You that's don't why, know. That's Nobody why they have support know. forums now, yeah. though, because that's how, okay. I feel like that's how they track these things. Yeah, but in that case, but in that case, if you go into complain a game doesn't work on a forum, is no different mm -hmm. than you going to the Proton forum and telling and telling the proton people what doesn't work and they will see that lots of people want this thing to work and they will code a solution right that is mm -hmm. probably more interaction than you will get off the developer of any random game on steam do you think from software care that you're having a linux problem like they don't right and feral yeah, interactive yeah. if like i would guess because they've got a budgetary because there's a budgetary system here for them i would guess mm -hmm. that they have a fixed finite budget for, for patches right and, and they've mm. obviously got enthusiastic goes, like, I'll fix that. It'll take two seconds. They're done. You know, there's always times like that. But in reality, if they are out of contract and they're no longer earning money from, the, as soon as that game doesn't become profitable, they may fix major game breaking bugs. Like if something happens, like there's an update to X11 that completely stops yeah. the game working, that they might deal with. Or the next update to Nvidia, they might do that. They probably will. They're even out of contract, right? But little niche cases and problems that only affect a handful of users once they're once that money's dried up they're not doing it now while that's porting houses people that release native games on linux right so if you buy a game mm -hmm. because it's native lots of times rust being a good example they go they go ah it's too much hassle just forget it and they stop doing the linux version that's happened many times it's happened with lots of games now and mm -hmm. it, it means that you buying a game because it's on linux is just fucking irrelevant like if it were like games aren't fucking historical works right with very few exceptions there are some exceptions right with very few exceptions mm -hmm. i will play a game now and i will keep playing it until i get bored and when i get bored i will never look at that game again right yeah um yeah the only time the only time that like if i haven't played left for dead in like two years then all of a sudden someone's like do you want to play left for dead i'm like okay let's play left for dead but for the most part mm -hmm. The, you know, you're going to play a game, then when you get bored, you'll move on. If the game that I'm going to play this month stops working in two years' time, I, I mm. don't care. 
who cares you, you've played it already move on you know this is the same reason yeah. i don't mind buying games off steam i know that fear that they're not really mine it's kind of a lifetime rental and all this i know all that i also don't care because i'll play it now then not play it you know we, we understood this i feel like we understood this better when we went from one console generation to the other because if you own a nintendo entertainment system you have a bunch of games right and you love them mm-hmm. and then the super nintendo entertainment system comes out and you either sell your nintendo or you watch it gather dust you know because you realize you don't really go back very often and there are exceptions to this. there are some wonderful games that i will still want to play in 20 years time you know there are some games that just so good or, or like they're personally good to me like the things mm-hmm. in them that i love that i would want to re-experience for the most part who, who gives a shit you know um so support is a, so i feel like support is a scam like when porting houses say buy our game because you're gonna get support i feel like no i'm not i'm gonna i'm not gonna get any more like i love i love the game near automata right that's one of the games i would say i will want to replay at some point in the future right i love yeah. that game yes. but it works well in proton now so there's no reason like they may patch the game but games don't get patched forever there comes a point when that game's not going to see any more patches from the original developer right or it's very mm. unlikely to, like borderlands 2 getting a patch was fucking like what who, who, no one saw that coming you know um yeah for, you know so when a game reaches a certain age it's basically just like frozen in time so once it's frozen in time like the case of near automata it works now there's no reason to think it won't work in the future and also if there is if we do want to play it in five years time and we find a problem we can probably send an email or a post a, a post an issue on GitLab or whatever and tell the Proton team it's not working or the Wine team it's not working. And there's a pretty good chance that someone there will be able to help us. Whereas if I post if I post over on 2K's forums that CK4 has stopped working, you know, the, sorry, the, um, the Civilization 4 stopped working, I'm not going to get an answer, you know? So yeah. in many ways... Pro the commun- Proton is the community. Wine is the community. I trust community support way more than I trust people trying to make money. And I've just gone on a massive rant, so I'm going to let you talk now. So I do agree with community support. But before I jump into that, yes, Linux Paul M, Nier Automata is love and is life. Oh, it's so good. I yeah. hope you've played the original Nier as well. If you haven't, go back and play yeah. that too um, for the connections. But I agree about community support. But I also, one of the bigger things here is the the power of choice so having multiple options and oh yeah i'm, and I'm not i'm, I'm not ranted against choice that so again big caveat was in my yeah. opinion you know yeah. yeah of course yeah um you know i want to throw that out there because i'm happy that we have a proton and i'm also happy that the community has the ability to fix problems right we don't have to wait for someone to give us the okay to get something done everyone can just jump in and collaborate to get <sighs> get a problem result which is awesome but at the same time, if that was the only option and for, I don't know, some for some random legal reason, we, we the Valve can't have Proton anymore. Mm-hmm. Developers are like, listen, we're tired of having all these Linux users come blasting our reviews, yep. saying that the game doesn't work, et cetera, because it's, it's messing with our sales because now our Windows users think the game's broken or something. You guys got to end Proton. Now we run into a new issue. Well, we get no games now <laughs> you know I, those are the things okay but i understand that but yeah, don't you yeah. think it's it's like wine has been going for a long time if it was possible for developers to prevent the wine team making a game compatible we would already have crossed that hurdle by now like wine's been around for a I long time i don't think so because we haven't uh, had this level of exposure until proton like people weren't going on steam and writing reviews based on performance in wine there was no there you know i know we had uh was it wine wine hq um uh, yeah we had like wine hq which would give uh give an idea of how well a game works but no one was really checking that proton db and then now the um, discussion forum is where people go so because of this level of exposure this there 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 are now more eyes on the performance no i totally agree with that yeah that's that's yeah so that that's i feel like that's where we're gonna run that's where we're gonna probably start seeing issues like that come up i feel like we need to just talk to chat for a minute yeah, Log, sure. Blog yeah. seventy eight in chat has said we're not talking about games frozen in time. We're talking about games like Red Dead Redemption Two and games like Destiny or Fortnite. Okay, my point is 
porting houses ain't porting those games. Like, if Feral want to go port Fortnite and Destiny, then you have my support and I'll throw money at you and hearts, right? Because you're doing something mm. that is then, like, your purpose is clear. You are taking games that do not work in Linux and making them work in Linux, which is what I said originally. Like, if a game does not work in Linux and you're going to make it work in Linux, that's a valuable proposition. I will literally pay you twice the value of the game to get that to happen, right? So if I can play mm -hmm. Destiny 2 on Linux natively, or even through Wine, if I can just play Destiny 2 on Linux, and you're going to go, give me £40 to do that, I'll just I'll, I'll be looking for my card while you're talking, you know? Um, same with yeah. Fortnite. Fortnite's a free game, but if you charge me £20 to play it on Linux, I'll pay that money. I don't even care about Fortnite. I just want it on Linux, you know? I'll pay the money. He's um, speaking for himself, ladies and gentlemen. I, again, you know I mean. no, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I don't... Free. It better be but free. <laughs> I don't, I don't, like... I want that game on Linux. I'm willing, even though I don't want to pay it, I'm willing to pay for it to make sure you know to, to be like, yeah, let's just do this because like these are these are things, these are products, these are things that do not work that do work. That supporting house doing something really useful. Porting mm -hmm. a game that already works fine in Proton is a waste of their time and a waste of my time because. And I know a lot of people out there only play native games, but that's their personal politics. They're not unable to because of some kind of technological barrier. That's personal politics. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're entitled to that, and I respect that. But uh, the reality is, if a game works in Pro, like a game that I can hit, that I can install and then run on Linux is a Linux game. You know, I don't much mm -hmm. care about the technology behind it. So when they said they're porting Tomb Raider, I went, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, I don't care. Um, but take it again that doesn't work, like Player Unknown Battlegrounds is one of the ones that's most requested over on Proton DB. That's something yeah, yeah. I totally like. Then you've got then Feral. You've not only got a purpose, but you've got fans. You've got people that give a shit about your work. You got you can have people sending you fucking cookies and shit. You know, like that's the service mm. to the community. Whereas porting a game that already works in Proton, unless you're going to double the frame rate, it, it doesn't really matter. And and I don't. I just genuinely honestly do not believe the support argument i don't care i've never cared about support i mean i just i don't I like the only time i've ever had support from a developer is when i've had a pre-existing relationship with that developer as a youtuber mm -hmm. or as a friend in chat and i've known them with some i've already had a pre-existing contact and i've had an email address that's not often i can go hey i've just seen so you know, i've had this problem that's resulted in me getting games fixed but me just posting anonymously on a forum or posting an anonymous um an anonymous support ticket has never mm. resulted in even like most of the time i don't even get a reply genuinely i get an automated reply and that's it i yeah. believe that and uh, uh to glog's point like, i got i'm curious if a game does run better in the port yeah. that the porting house creates d is that an argument in favor of I porting mean, houses or is it still one of those like, okay oh, we should work on i mean yeah i mean yes obviously if it makes better for that's the thing and in this case like, like Tomb Raider does apparently perform notably better in Proton than it does in that it does sorry, in in the native version it does in Proton, and the reason for that I feel is probably the magic of Vulcan. Um, yeah, and and I think and I've always said that if Feral can start producing ports that run like massively better than Proton, then they've still got a job in my eyes. But uh, I think yes. I think the pro the other problem is they're lot sort of soft re-releasing a game that's been out for twelve months already. I feel like yeah. these ports are exciting when they happen. Like when I when the porting house goes, we've been working with like in fact, like Stellaris was a good example. Stellaris came out the same day on Linux as it did on Windows, and that was great because everyone played at the same time, and it was exciting. It felt like a AAA thing. And then like like mm -hmm. you know, if if you're going to give me a game twelve months after it's come out, it's hard for me to be excited. You know, like I, I might care the time it comes out, but most people who want to play Tomb Raider have already purchased Tomb Raider, right? Yeah. So they're not going to be purchased on Linux. And then Feral are going to show that they haven't had many sales on Linux. It's going to turn out to be a bad investment for them, which then reflects badly on Linux as a whole. So I'm like, the whole thing to me just makes me mad, you know? Yeah, Fal Falmer did bring up a good point um, about porting versus wine is basically closed source, proprietary software versus community open source. In that battle, we already know the answer of who the winner is. I get that. Yeah. And then also on top of that, um, Chris, where's question? I like, could Proton make porting houses job easier if they bundle their game and support it with Proton? I mean, that's fine. Now that that's, that's fine. great, and that's yeah. that's that's one of the things I'm arguing Do that. for is the existence of porting houses should be, or they should remain in existence. I don't think they should be taken out just because we have Proton. Because yes, we do have support from the community, which is great. But if you have a dedicated group, like they are, they are set to focus on this. That is their job. 
I feel like you will have quicker turnaround as far as certain things getting yeah. ported or things getting patched. Not that's not to speak negatively against the community, but these people that's not their job. Like, they do that in out my of the goodness in my of opinion. Hearts. The biggest porter of games to Linux is Valve. They have ported yes. more games than anyone, and the reason I say that is because before Proton was a thing, there was many games on on Linux that was literally wine wrappers mm -hmm. and I knew for a fact that when I hit play it was loading up wine and launching the game. It wasn't even hidden in a lot of cases, right? Nobody argued yeah, yeah. that those games were somehow not okay to run Linux. But then when Proton came along, the argument appeared that, oh you shouldn't use it as what you know. But there was a lot no no one complained when like The Witcher Two came to Linux and we all know it was just a wrapper. It was just a virtual code. Well everyone right? complained when the Witcher Okay well that was performance. Linux, but that was, for but that was performance, not it wasn't complaining <laughs> because it was a wrapper. That was complaining because it was shit, you know? Um, yeah, they did yeah, fix that yeah. in the end, didn't they? Fix that in the end. I wonder if yeah, that it's great. Yeah, I played through it. It was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Um, definitely go check that out if you haven't. Go back to it. Yeah. Um, yes, agree. But the thing uh, is, though, like every game might or might not work. I agree with that. But we've got Pro. I mean, you've got Proton DB on the screen right now. You can go and check before you buy it if it's going to work properly in Proton. And then if in the future it's patched and doesn't work. Well, I mean, the, mm -hmm. like they could quite easily, you could buy a game that's Linux native and then the company goes bust. Or you could buy a game that's Linux native and then literally a month later they go, oh, we're not supporting that anymore, you know? And, you know, that's even worse in a lot of ways. But I just don't, I, I just don't feel, yeah, I, I think it's hard to explain. I just, I kind of feel like I'm articulating this badly. Like while I think porting houses should be like making stuff work that doesn't work in Linux, I, I just don't think, I don't think they've got a viable future on Linux, I think you'll find all these porting hands will start working on Macs primarily. And I think you'll they'll mm -hmm. slowly just do less and less. And we're already seeing that with Feral and Aspire. We're just seeing less interest in Linux because of Proton. But at the same time, we're seeing massively more games playable on Linux. So, you know, it all kind of like, it all kind of, it all, I feel like it doesn't matter. But, you know, that's... It, I mean, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't. But I'm, I'm hopeful that these folks... Um shift gears and probably work on proton specifically as chris pointed out earlier like i think that that would be the ideal circumstance they will start making proton better so that all these games work um but the problem is now you're boxed into just valve's ecosystem what about gog and what about well i mean that, no that's I mean, not that's... fair because i mean that while i could see why people would say that i can go to lutras mm -hmm. right now i can install a game and use proton to launch it so i'm not locked into valve's ecosystem. i can buy a game from gog and I can mm -hmm. launch that through Proton in Lutris, or if I wanted to, I could do it on the command line. You don't need to use Lutris, but Lutris is accessible. So even though, while I can see why people say that, you're not, Proton is very open source. It's very much part of the community. Mm -hmm. Like GOG could make a launcher that launches Proton games. You know, like it would be easy for I'm them to do I'm hoping they do. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that they do. We're not, yeah. I mean, the argument that we're locked in just doesn't stand up. I mean, like if you're willing to use Wind, you might as well use Proton instead. This is the reality of yeah. it, you know? Um, and then we have, we did have a comment back there I wanted to point out as well. Um, okay, uh, Glog says by EU law it's illegal to stop supporting it. Um, I don't believe it is because if you buy a game and they are selling you version one point zero of that game, then I think they're allowed to not give you version two of the game. I think I'm not sure, but that seems to be how it's panned out. Now, if someone wants to test that in court, that'd be great. But if a, if a company, if a developer doesn't want to support your platform, if a court makes them, they're not going to do a very good job anyway. You know, they're just going to find other ways of just, they're going to say they're supporting, they're just not. Or just make bad patches, you know. I don't think it's the sort of thing that the law will really help us with on this one. If the law said, if you don't have feature parity between two platforms, give them a refund, that'd help. But the reality is, I don't think that, I don't think that you can enforce that, in, you know, in computer games. Yeah. Well, let's hope one day. And then, but, and then right, how can... many? But how many games have you bought, right, Kai? That you've bought on Windows, even, and then the developer just like stops doing patches after like two weeks. You no, know, that's true. Just... That's that's true. That is true. Yeah. I have a, a number of those that exist. Yeah. And when you brought that point up, I was like, yeah, that's okay. That's bad. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> true. They yeah. do. They do stop. But, uh, um, at a, at a certain point. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, the like, thing is that well, everything you said originally about support and things. If I felt like all of that was true. I'd be thrilled that Feral had ported Tomb Raider. But I mean, like, yeah. I, 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 because of the way I feel about this, I did not take a review key from them because I did not feel like it was fair to take a review key to then go, I think they're fucking pointless. You know, it didn't seem right to me. So I, yeah, I have yeah. I have purposely not taken a review key for that reason. If they review something that didn't work previously, I'll be all over that. I'll be I'll be happy to talk about it. And, you know, that that's, that's what they should be doing. 
But um, now yeah. full disclosure, I did receive a review key, but um, and when I do review, I did. and they will not see um, this video, I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, if they, it, well, I'm not gonna point them in this direction, but um, I do intend, like during my review, to bring up that point yeah. about hoping that if they, if they find that proton may be some form of a threat to their existence, I want to point out that I hope they shift gears and start supporting proton, um, and getting involved in that community just so we know that they can still exist and that we can have like a, an entity that receives money um, outside of just Valve making sure that games work on Linux. Uh, well, I, I do well, intend to put that out there. They some, may or may not like that, but, you know. No, well, I mean, you, you should never be... A key is not a promise. You should, you know... That's what I'm saying. Key, yeah, a review yeah. key is not a contract. You, you, you give an opinion. Otherwise, your, your exactly. content is not worthwhile. But uh, some exactly. size just raised the only point i've ever agreed with about why we need native linux games right and that point is if you're just running windows games there's no reason to create development tools on linux and i'm like that's the only thing that i've ever gone all right okay good point but likewise <laughs> if all the games are made for windows and they all run in linux who cares about development tools on linux you know like we almost at that point don't need to so i'm very torn on that point that's the one point samsai that I have to still have to like, it's, I've still got some dissonance there. I still need to figure out my opinion on that. But uh, I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only one. And it's, I'm net annoyed because I think he knows that that's the one thing I can't argue. And that's why he brings yeah. it up. So well played, <laughs> well played, Sam. Sorry, well played. <laughs> yeah. But, and know, Dlog, Dlog I'll, said I'll, the other one as well. Linux games are already dead. I agree with that already. Yeah. It, but it's become yeah, gaming. It's... Linux gaming is dead because Linux is just gaming now. And that's where we yeah. wanted to be originally. That's what we wanted mm -hmm. at the start. So, you know. That's what everyone was begging for. This is true. We got yeah. what we asked for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and this may, we may see a rise in free and open source games now. Right? Like, like I hope so. For the folks who don't want to use Wine and the people who yeah. don't want to use Steam. Now it's like, no, oh, I, we'll that, make our own game. I really like open source engines. I like it when people get like Diablo 2 and then rebuild the engine open source. That sort of shit yeah. I love. And then like a few years later, someone finds the engine and goes, let's build a whole new game out of this. You know, I like that. <laughs> That's the, that I, I like open Morrowind and stuff. I get excited, but sorry, open MW for legal reasons. Um, I get excited with, with these open re-implementations when they take the original game, they make a new engine, then they go further than the original game. They excite me. Mm. Um, there's not massive amounts of open source games that excite me, but you know, we've talked about that a lot. So uh, yeah. It's a, and a few people in chat, um, Kai, have been talking about Stadia and saying about that's going to foster Linux native games. I'm not sure it will, but literally I don't know that's going to pan out. So, If every game that's on Stadia gets released for Linux, that would be a step forward, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah I'm, not so, I'm not so sure if I see that panning out. Unless, well, Valve would have to get involved in some form of fashion. Well, I feel like they would be the ones. This might be a good time to talk about our news items, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll mm -hmm. jump forward to that we just said. Uh, Gaming on Linux posted uh, on the 6th of November, on the 6th, um, talk about say Stadia set to launch something, sorry, Valve set to launch something called Steam Cloud Gaming. Now, um, great article from Liam there, well written and lots of good points, but for you guys who haven't read this, the basic principle is there's been things uncovered in, in, in source code that imply that Valve have got abandoning this term around called Steam Cloud Gaming. Now, with the launch of Stadia just, like, what, 10 days away now? Um, it's mm. going to be late, but, you know, 10 days away in theory. Uh, Valve are, like, ramping up. And it would be, in my opinion, the best business move ever for them to bury the Stadia launch announcement by announcing Steam Cloud Gaming, which would be the exact same thing as, as, as Stadia. Um, that would be very smart business, and it would be the right thing to do for them to just absolutely bury the competition by announcing something that people give a shit about. But uh, yeah, I I do not know how they will do it, because uh, if they decide they want to give streaming gaming, do you think I'll be able to play Star Traders over the cloud? Like, how will this work? They can't have it. Like, Stadia are fortunate. They're starting off fresh. <laughs> they can have every game just running in the cloud, ready to go, where I... I don't think Valve are going to have Hello Kitty World Adventure running just on a, you know, ready for me. So the only way I can see it working is you have your own instance and you install things to your cloud. Is the only way I can see it happening. And everyone gets an allowance of cloud. I, I don't see it working any other way, to be honest. You see the problem, right, Kai? Like, there are um, so many Steam. games on Steam. Like, how can you have all those games ready to play? You, you just can't do that, surely. 
Yeah, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I'm wondering if you got a, you, yeah. there's going to be a subscription behind, or well, no one I knows. guess we don't know all uh, that would, information, but the yeah. smart, I mean, Stadia, it would have to be. When Stadia is launched in three or four months' time, it will be no subscription. Mm-hmm. You can simply buy a game and play a game on Stadia, and then there's a there's an advanced tier if you want 4K, if you want 60 frames a second, you know, as I want 120 mm-hmm. frames a second. If you want if you want the higher stuff, you'll pay for the, the higher tier. And again, the subscription gives you free games every month, like all these other console subscriptions. So Steam would have to match that, which means they would have to make mm-hmm. it. So any game you already own, you can play in the cloud. Um, but the only way I can see doing that is like Shadow PC do it, where like you literally get to install things to your cloud client, and then you get to, to play things from your cloud client and then delete things as, as you don't want them. I can't see another way of doing mm-hmm. it. It doesn't make sense to me any other way. Because there's some yeah, really, that- really trash games on Steam. Yeah, their business model would probably be um, you get a certain amount of storage, yeah. and then you pay you could for probably pay for more storage. Store more yeah. Games. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so you probably hmm. pay five dollars, like pay an extra five dollars a month for an extra five hundred gig. That that that'd be kind of reasonable yeah. as well, kind of fair. I mean, they give you like yeah. give you like twenty gig for free, and then you pay for any more you want. It'd be fine. Um, because to be honest, you only you would only in the case of Steam. You would only want to stream stuff that you can't play natively. In the case of Linux users, we could go, okay, well, we'll install, we'll, in, we'll install like a bunch of, like, we'll install Destiny Two to the cloud. PUBG. Yeah, PUBG to the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Play that from the cloud, and they're not fucking give a fuck, you know. So it would be great, mm. but uh, I can't see a way of them doing it where every game is magically available in the cloud. The other concern is they're going to go like moving forward. We'll have cloud games and local games. You know, that's another option, but that wouldn't be very impressive. So what you mean, like specific games that work? Yeah, on the yeah. Cloud alone, but they literally, they, uh, well, they, they could literally go like, like we've got, I don't know, for instance, like they're launching, um, I don't know what's coming up. So we're launching Death Stranding, right? So you have the option yeah. when you buy Death Stranding to buy the local version or the cloud version. That's the only other way I can see about doing it. Like it's, you pick one or the other, or you buy it once and you get to pick, you know, and then like, so Death Stranding is a cloud game. So if you buy that, you can play it locally or in the cloud. You know, like, like, like yeah. so going forward and don't have it for past titles. And then, like, it's up to the developers then to add that support later, maybe. Yeah, because I was going to say, I was like, I, I can't imagine them making you buy two versions or well, just I mean, presenting, like, like, two hours. Given the cost of, cl- I mean, you got to remember, there's always a tangible cost to cloud gaming, right? Unlike, yeah, yeah. Like, unlike Valve saying, so you buy it once and you own it on Mac and PC and Linux like they do now, they all, you know, the cloud costs them money every time you play because there's bandwidth costs yeah. and storage costs and there's hardware costs mm-hmm. as well. So, like, I could see them making you choose one or the other so that they can spit up the right number of servers and stuff. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. be shocked at that. It would be out of character for Valve, but I think business-wise, they may have to make a decision like that. See, for this for this particular setup, I'm hoping that um, if it is implemented, they would probably start off with all of the games that have easy anti-cheat stuck in That'd them. That would be so smart, this way. yeah. I yeah. feel like that would be the wisest decision because then you can now fire up PUBG or um, Destiny 2, etc. So that I'm hoping they don't do what Google Stadia is doing. It's like, let's throw an Assassin's Creed or any like single player games. I feel like you're going to be always online anyway. Yeah. So it would make sense to release a, a yeah. package of online so like games. Nobody wants, for- to play, nobody wants to play PUBG on their own, you know? So yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. <laughs> but there, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's that. Yes. So let's hope. Fingers crossed. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how much further this develops. Um, I'll keep an eye on the news as well because it sound, sounds like Valve has some, uh, some tricks up their um, sleeve that they're ready to. Glog, it's been announced this week. Uh, Glogging chat says Steam so far don't allow selling subscriptions. They are in the future. It's already been announced that they are in talks with EA to allow EA all access to come to Steam, so you can pay for a subscription within Steam. So they've already they've already bent that rule for for, for EA. So I wouldn't be shocked if we're going to see that. You know part of a wider rollout and also whether you like it or not and i'm not sure i don't think i do like it but whether you like it or not gaming as a service is a thing now like there are games like there are games that you pay for monthly like fortnite has its own subscription rocket league has its own subscription you know and then there are games final fantasy Fantasy well their modes are a separate category in my opinion but like and then like this thing about like uh like stadia's coming and people are going to embrace that hard because of the hardware cost and you're going to see people like yes the argument is if that service stops you won't own your game people will worry about that but the exact same can be said for steam if valve go bust tomorrow you're not playing any of your games so it, you know we still have that problem steam is essentially always online drm so yeah you know i know you can go offline and there are ways to do it and there's lots of games that don't have drm on steam but if you're buying games on steam there's no argument against stay stadia or against steam cloud gaming in my opinion yeah uh you know i'm i i feel like there's still uh a, a small subset of folks that are resistant to this whole idea um yeah 
gaming as a service and, and it's it's the same folks who don't like drm um yeah and, and uh, again, maybe not exactly everyone's the same, you, but I mean, you don't own it you feel, you probably feel like me it's personal politics and i totally respect my decision and yeah. i'm not in no yeah. way criticizing and my only criticism comes when they take to the forums to tell people they're, they're, to, yes. they're to preach it and if that's your personal politics fair play and, I, and if you say that to me in chat i'm like okay that's fair you know but if you're on a forum like if you go to the, like the stadia forum to tell people why stadia is bad you're being an asshole at that point you know for as long as yeah, you like yeah, as long like, as it's your politics it's, it's it's i respect the hell out of that i wish i was more like that to be honest <laughs> I, I think that people have the right to express their you know concerns about a particular thing but if yeah, it, yeah if you're spamming forums and you know you know basically protesting um within the within people's forums i think that that's kind of that's kind of silly um you still have the option of owning you know owning some of your games sorry not all of your games uh some of the older games etc that don't have these things attached to them yeah and all those, going, and going, all those, going forward it's going yeah. to be drm i don't think we're we're seeing a change in that anytime soon no matter how much you protest i i'm pretty confident that that is just going to be the nature yeah. of i mean i really believe that streaming gaming is the future of gaming because yeah. most people either cannot afford or do not want to afford a full exactly. pc gaming rig and that's the only exactly. thing holding back gaming is the cost of ownership um log said stadia the only bad things the way they've implemented it um as if a customer can lose all rights to a game uh well no you've already got that in steam though. in steam already log you can already lose all your rights to a game like if steam mm -hmm. go bust you lose your rights to the game if they if they suddenly go out of business tomorrow your games are gone so it's the exact same deal as stadia because in stadia you can mm -hmm. buy a game then you can play a game up until the service is no longer existing even though yeah. valve say they've got an exit plan they probably have them to be honest they probably don't have an exit plan and there's an entire generation of you know kids right now growing up where this is the norm and there's going to be a generation after them that it that is they are immersed in that entire culture that ecosystem and you know we also have to keep in mind that because of that this the system is actually pretty genius when you think about it the uh the inexpensiveness of doing this right like yep. you don't have to buy a console you don't have to yep. buy x y and z now we can loop in the parents who are doing their holiday shopping it's like oh yeah. well we already have a tablet at home i just got to pay 10 bucks for this service yeah. great this will keep the kids quiet that and is going to normalize this, way this, more uh, likely structure. if you're 15 your mommy getting you a stadia controller and a chromecast for christmas for like 60 70 quid it's way more likely than a 500 pound playstation 5 you know yeah it's like exactly. way more likely so it's definitely yep. future um so Velma, uh, selma says you can there's drm free games on Steam. there are i know yep i've already said yep. that there are absolutely yeah. um yeah, and in Stadia, you have no option to back them up. Well, yeah, you don't have an option to back them up, but literally yeah, most of the games on Steam, sucks. you can back them up to reinstall, but if Steam goes bye-bye, they're not DRM. So if you're willing to buy a game that has DRM, then there's no argument against Stadia, unless you have a low, mm. low, generate, you know, low internet connection, then it's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah, and the next generation will be Netflix for games. Yeah, and yeah, again, yeah. I'm not. I'm yeah. still not convinced that ownership matters one bit. If I can play a game from start to finish a couple of times, the chances are I'm never ever going to touch that game again. And that to me yeah. is like the reality is I'm not going to play Dark Souls one again. I might feel nostalgic mm. in four years' time, but if I feel nostalgic to play Dark Souls one in four years' time, I can probably buy it for a pound on, on whatever service it's around on. Because the cost of games yeah. plummets after a certain point. When they hit that point yeah. where they're no longer making money, they just drop it to a stupid cheap because they know that you you know inherently you you you're probably not going to buy it unless it's cheap. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for the folks who are like collectors. Maybe like, I know that that they they are think, hopeful for a future where they can collect stuff. But at the same time, I think that's something always keep in mind. They they yeah. And outside of them though, like the folks who they they may not be collectors, but they like to have their old games on the shelf, etc. Yeah. Something to think about is CDs, it's already gone. CDs fade and then cartridges corrode. You, you see what I'm saying? It, they're owning you don't really, really own anything. These things will stop working after a certain point anyway, no matter how much you take care of them. So I I think that this might I don't like the always online <laughs> part of this service. I feel like that's something that's annoying. It won't work without being online. I understand that. But that's one thing I'm not a big fan of because if you know if the network goes down in your area for some reason, power outages, something, whatever, you have no way of keeping yourself entertained. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, let me not say power outages because your computer's not working then, right? But um, if there's a network issue in your area for whatever reason, you're not getting online, you're not playing any games. Um, the, you're uh... sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Uh, chats got all chats got all fired up now and they always get fired up when we talk about the games or service uh dlogs yeah. pointed out here that valve has basically said like you know forget a business they've got an exit plan is what he's saying there um 
I've never believed they've got an exit plan. Like yeah, legit, I don't believe that. Uh, they're a corporation, and corporations are inherently evil, so I never trust them. And as for Google, yeah. Google have said repeatedly, as many times as clearly as possible, they have a long-term plan for Stadia. They are looking at a minimum of a 10-year investment. That's if Stadia only loses money. So if it only loses money between now and 10 years' time, you've still got 10 years. Most companies yeah. don't have a finite. Most companies won't be trusted for 10 years. And I believe, I do believe Google on this case. The reason is, to set up Stadia must have cost them billions. So I believe mm -hmm. that they want to try persevere to get this investment back. Um, somebody else back there said, why doesn't Netflix get into game streaming? I have no doubt they will. I have absolutely yeah, zero doubt gonna, that you'll see gonna, Netflix gaming, uh, Netflix G mm. or something they'll call it. But yeah, it's Netflix coming. stream. It's coming. Yeah. Netflix also, play guys, writes itself. Please right? remember, please remember, emulators and ROMs. <laughs> Just, yeah, well, just this, is, out there. this was given by the point. Piracy is the game archive. If you buy a game today and you can't play it tomorrow, Pirate Bay is still there for you, buddy. You know, like yeah. I know, like a lot of people like always like raise eyebrows when I mention piracy here. But if if Steam goes <clears> out of business and you really want to play that game you bought four years ago, it'll be on Pirate Bay. Like mm -hmm. it's legit. Like the, the argument against Stadia is it solves the piracy problem for developers. Like that's the best argument against Stadia because if a game's a Stadia exclusive, there are no pirate copies around. So that's mm -hmm. that's the real reason to be against Stadia, but uh, yeah, I'm, I think ROMs are great. I mean, I've got the entire of the '90s sitting on my hard. In fact, I've got the entire of the '90s yeah. on a handheld emulator box over there. You know, like mm -hmm. it, it's a solved problem up until a certain point. Then when games became online, it became fuzzy, uh, and that's where we are now. That's that, that's the the kids now that are playing Halo are the people when they become adults, they won't have the back catalog of ROMs that we had. They're gonna have to look back at emulators and weird fucking weird fucking hacked xboxes that just happen to have halo on the hard drive still you know they're gonna they're mm. gonna have the real problems playing the games they love in years to come we're already playing super mario on i mean fuck's sake i've got all of the uh all the castlevania games on my phone you know it's yeah. like i've got a little emulator yeah. i played it on my lunch break you know um the real problem is for those kids that want to look back in, in 20 years from now so yeah yeah, yeah, but I'm sure by then there will be some form of technology that that enables them to do that. Someone's going to do it. I mean, there's a PS3 emulator that's yeah. it, you know still working right now. You can yeah. play the original here on that, so yeah. it it, but, it won't stop as long as the community well, remains. That's the thing. It will it will stop, stop because when the PlayStation oh, well, when Four online, turns off their servers. Lots of these games yeah. are just hard, gonna not work, you know. Um, are you talking about the online games? No, I'm, I'm talking about, about no, I'm talking player about player single player stuff. There are single player games. Oh. Like a great example is already happening. Scott Scott Pilgrim versus the World, right? Oh, on yeah. PlayStation Three yeah. was a digital download only. The only way yeah. to play that game right now is to find a PlayStation with that game still on the hard drive. Don't update yeah. it and load the game. Like honestly, that game's just gone. Like like Cybers and I both like have played it and like it a lot. And you just mm -hmm. can't play it. You have to literally same. Yeah, there's loads. The, the, that's not the only case. Um, oh, um, something. Uh, what was it? Save the princess. A fat princess on the PlayStation Three is another one. That was a game I played. <laughs> like I played hundreds of hours of Fat Princess. Right, love that mm -hmm. game. It's just gone now. It's just gone. You know. Um, anything digit. Any game that's digital only through the PlayStation or Microsoft stores or even the Nintendo yeah. store. The, once they tell you that game's gone, it's over. It's gone. And just give up, move on. You know that's the problem with that. That is true. I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot about the um, yeah, the uh, Xbox Arcade stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But hey, guys, there's still Super Nintendo, Dreamcast, PlayStation Two. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're running over. Yeah. So I'm just gonna cram in the last yeah, piece yeah. very quickly. Is um, yeah, Steam brought back small mode. That you can now get back small mode. There's an option now to get back small mode in Steam. So good guy Valve did that for you. They listen and I was like, all right, people really like small mode. Who knew? You know, I didn't even know small mode was a thing until it vanished and people moaned about it. Up until then, I was like, what the fuck is small mode? But apparently, it's just the library list in a little window and it just sits in the corner. It's like, okay, yeah. fine. So they've added it back. Uh, people are still pissed about the new library. Do you? I didn't, I didn't even yeah. know it was a thing. I didn't literally didn't know it was yeah. a thing until, until it went away. But uh, I did yeah. try it with Steam. There's a, there was a command line hack you could do. You go Steam mm -hmm. and then. Cola. You could give it the address of small mode, but like a URL of small mode, and it loaded in small mode. But you couldn't uninstall nice. games and shit, so that was broken. But uh, yeah, it's, it's sorted now anyway. Or at least they say it's sorted. Whether people are happy with it or not, I don't know. But uh, they're, I mean, if they're pushing towards this new library is related to Steam Remote Play and stuff, or Cloud Play, that would make sense mm -hmm. to me. It really would make sense to me. So that that's good. But uh, the last, yeah, I think we've covered everything. We've I think we've mm -hmm. covered all the things, Kai. 
Um, I don't think I had anything else to say. Um, I'm trying to wrap my brains. I felt like there was something else that I, had, I was supposed to say, but I don't think there is. So yeah, we're done, Carl. Do you have anything to say to the audience, or are we just done? Guys, I'd let, we are all one community, out of many one Linux, as I always say. So uh, it doesn't matter if you support DRM or you don't, or if you <laughs> want to you know, support Feral no or one. not, porting houses yeah. or not, etc. We're all still using Linux, so love you guys. And, and um, Hex didn't hit me, didn't so I'm hit. safe. I, I did pull a literal fucking <laughs> lightsaber on you. And at one point, I had a hammer. So, you know, <laughs> I, pulled out, I pulled out my emergency uh, hammer to deal with people. Um, but yeah, the, the, um, and the other thing is, like, I don't, like, people miss, people, I feel like people purposely misunderstand me because I'm willing to say a lot of this shit. Um, I don't support mm -hmm. DRM. I prefer it to fuck off. But the reality is, it's here, and I like to play video games, right? And if I really hated mm -hmm. DRM, I'd be on Pirate Bay. It was the only answer, yeah. you know? Um, so, yeah. But uh, thank you all very much for watching. This has been quite a... I think this has been a very enjoyable rant, Carl. I really enjoyed this. We've I both gone this, at yeah. it. It's been great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, don't forget, we've got a big December this year. I'm doing lots of lots of weird streams in December with my friends. We're all going to get together and do weird shit for your entertainment um, throughout the whole of December. Um, <laughs> what's this? Hex will stop, Hex will stop support X Penguin like some Linux ports. <laughs> okay i'll i'll tell you what i'll do that i'll stop supporting x penguin i'll wind down support on x penguin over christmas how about that <laughs> so hex.ini so thanks for watching guys i love you all very much and goodbye see you